Alrighty, welcome back, you guys, to another offshore spearfishing video. We are back at it. If you guys are new here, my name is Braden Sharon. I do a lot of offshore spearfishing and fishing here in the Gulf of Mexico out of my Ponga boat. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. We're taking out a guy named Ted from Brazil, and he's dove all over the world, very experienced diver. He actually booked to go out on the 37 foot catamaran that you guys have seen me go out a few times uh, that my buddy Captain Blake Beal runs and I'm going to be the spearfishing point man for that trip in a couple of days but he flew in and we just had an amazing weather window so we went out on the ponga so that's what this video is taking him out we're going to go spearfish the rig so you guys stay tuned next video we'll be going deep on the invincible with him as well so hopefully you guys enjoy it this was one of the most scenic days of diving of the entire summer it was super fishy and even though this one isn't full of a bunch of shots i really wanted to make a full video out of it and share it because there was tons of fish and plenty to talk through so with that said let's get into it all right so with that out of the way as you guys can see i'm up here in the hill country it is that time of the year but along with that when i'm up here i have very slow wi-fi speed so i actually have to drive into town and go to a coffee shop usually starbucks and get on public wi-fi to upload the videos but that said Every time I upload, I have to use a VPN, which brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark VPN. If you guys don't know, VPNs are a crucial asset to have on your phone or computer, especially now in 2022 when there's so much information on your devices. Why use a VPN? Well, if you're using public Wi-Fi like I do and I'm uploading videos, hackers can get on, access your data, steal your information, see what you're doing on your computer, and you won't even know about it. But aside from protecting all of your information, VPNs have a very practical use when it comes to streaming services such as Netflix. Netflix actually will block certain shows or movies depending on where you are in the world. So in some places, you can see movies that you can't where you're at. You can change that by turning your VPN onto the location of your choosing, refreshing, say your Netflix, and boom, you got movies that you couldn't see before. With Surfshark, you can use unlimited devices, avoid travel restrictions, keeping digital freedom while traveling to internet restricted countries. You'll get the best prices online. Sometimes when you're traveling and they see your IP address, they'll mark up the prices. If you're wondering, Surfshark VPN is actually super simple to use. All you have to do is download the app, create an account, which doesn't take any time at all. And then if you want, you can select which location you want to be seen at. And then all you have to do is press quick connect. So with that said, right now, the 24 month VPN option is one of the best ones you can get. And now as Black Friday is so close, Surfshark has a great offer where you can get three months extra and 85% off if you just scan the QR code on the screen or click the link in the description box below and use my promo code you see on the screen now. So try it out for yourself. And if you find a better VPN solution for all of your devices that serves you 24 seven, Surfshark has a 30 day money back guarantee if you're not satisfied. Huge thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. It's companies like Surfshark sponsoring the video, sponsoring the channel. It really does help us out in doing what we're doing. And along with that, I wanted to give a big thank you to all of you guys watching the videos, supporting, liking, commenting. If it wasn't for y'all watching the videos and supporting me and doing what we're doing in the first place, I wouldn't have opportunities to do these ad integrations at all. You guys are fueling this entire thing, and I just want to say thank you for that. As of right now, the ad integrations seem like a very practical option for me in continuing to do what we're doing and sustain myself while making these videos. So hopefully you guys understand and support it. With that said, that's enough talk. Let's get into the action. Welcome back underwater to the offshore oil rigs. All of this video is gonna be underwater footage. And again, like the last video, I am not out to shoot a bunch. At the time of this video, I still had Kubera, Cobias, and some snapper. So, main goal is to get Ted on some fish. I will shoot, but I'm gonna restrain for most of the day even though we're gonna be seeing a bunch of big shooter fish. But I didn't wanna end up with a giant box at the end of the day that we did not need. So don't have to shoot just because you can. I really enjoy just coming out here, diving the rigs and checking everything out. 
But here we go. This is Ted's first dive, and he makes quick work of a mangrove snapper. Here, spinner shark comes cruising in from all that commotion, and I just go down to secure the fish and make sure that shark doesn't get too confident and try to snatch it. On these really clear days, you can make out those spinner sharks on the outside of the rig, just cruising around. And that's actually what I just pointed out there. You can see it way down there, right above that murk. That's really where they like to sit and cruise, right around that line where that murk layer hits. So in an ideal situation, you always want to secure that fish quickly. Obviously that's not always possible when the fish is fighting or you don't make a super damaging shot. But that's the goal. I've had quite a bit of spinner sharks try to rob fish off of me and even take my fish. So they know what the deal is. But here is my first dive of the day. This is where I'll scope everything out, see what kind of fish are swimming around. And currently we are seeing the usual residents. That being the mangrove snapper, the sheep's head, spade fish and a ton of bait and there you can barely make out that spinner still cruising out there hanging around quite a few of you guys ask me why I don't shoot the sheep's head or even the spade fish and really I just prefer the snapper and when we're out here seeing both I just shoot the snapper instead of the sheep's head. I used to shoot a bunch of sheep's head when I dove the jetties a whole lot and they're great eating but when I have the choice I go with the mangrove. They're also easier to clean and who doesn't love snapper meat? I'd say another aspect of it too is also the challenge. These snapper tend to be more elusive. They smarten up much quicker. I tell people spade fish are probably the best fish to shoot if you're a beginner. Sheep's head are a little bit more difficult, but if you're shooting snapper, you know you're hunting right. So I like that aspect of it. You have to be a little bit more skilled in your approach and oftentimes have to go deeper for them. But it kind of works out. I enjoy the challenge aspect of it, but also they taste better in my opinion, so there you go. Here I actually dropped on a pocket of clear down here on the bottom, and I don't even think I saw it in the moment, but there is a big red snapper amidst all the mangroves there. I might have been pointing at it here, but I do not recall. But as you can see, I could have definitely shot a snapper there. But going back to what I said in the beginning, you don't always have to shoot just because you can. And when you're being really selective as well, you also want to hold out even more. If you guys notice, that's kind of how I am. I'm not really one to straight shoot, shoot, shoot right away. I'd like to hold out and really look around. And then after, if we want the meat, I'll go back and shoot, say, the mangroves and whatever else we want to shoot that doesn't necessarily leave the area while we're diving. To shoot unexpected fish, you got to be ready. And that means not constantly shooting other stuff. But really for me to shoot today, I'm looking for a red snapper. I decided I'm only gonna shoot one 
fish for the day. Ted shooting mangroves and red snapper. I know you guys really like seeing the shot clips, but please understand we are not in a typical situation. It's not all the time you shoot a giant Kubera. This was pretty recent after that. So it's not always going to be like this. Also, I share fish with a lot of friends and family as well, so I'll have more opportunity at shooting more for them. But in this time frame, we were diving a bunch, and on top of not needing the fish, I really didn't have the time to properly package it and take care of it so it would freeze and not go bad. So trying to be responsible in that aspect. But with that said, I'm going to let the next sequence roll. You guys enjoy. Lots of kings in Spanish. So at this point, we actually move spots. We go a little bit deeper, and there is a giant school of mangrove snapper at this rig. All of those fish down there in that school are mangroves. Pretty wild. Here's a clip of my buddy Carson. He came out with us. You'll be seeing some videos in the very near future. Going out with him, doing some stuff we've never done before, which I'm excited to share. 
But here I am relaxing, calming down, trying to slow my heart rate to make a dive. I in this giant school of mangroves. Ted's on the other side of the rig here. And check this out. Same strategy as I always talk about. The fish reciprocates your movement. So I'm going down, very relaxed. And once I get near that Merc, I'll plane out and hope something comes up. There you go, up from the Merc, we get our red snapper. But it takes off, I grab that line right away to put pressure on it, so it doesn't go down in that Merc and get tangled up. But it's fighting hard, I put the resistance I can on it, but first priority is always get to the surface. So it runs a little bit, but I am able to keep it out of the rig and from tangling up. There was a bit of a risk of a spinner shark coming in there and taking a chomp of it, but thankfully we got lucky and that commotion didn't draw one up. It's also really important to be conscious of the line. Notice how I kept it clear and away from my body so I wouldn't get wrapped up. But there you go, that is the only fish I'm gonna shoot this entire day. Here I brain it and bleed it as always. The snapper had a circle hook in the top lip of its mouth, which was pretty cool. Here I'm actually gutting the fish. I don't always do this, but I've gotten some comments about it. But the idea is that when you gut the fish, it's going to be removing a bunch of that heat production and your ice isn't going to melt as fast. Also, it's feeding the other fish. I'm sure all of those mangroves down there are just going to chow on those guts. So if you're not going to weigh the fish, then I like the idea of getting your fish cool down faster, saving ice, and I'd much rather feed these fish than feed the hardheads at the dock. All right. Beautiful red. You can tell he's been brained because he's starting to turn white. Good fish. That is a fat mangrove. Just put my red in the boat. Carson shot a toad mangrove. Slip tip always gets stuck. That'll be my one fish for the day. <laughs> Here. All right. Got a fish? Yeah. Huge one on the bottom. Got me a red. Yeah. Well, no, not this. I saw you shoot it, though. Oh, yeah. There's another one. Red snapper? You want to make another dive for it? Huh? You want to make a dive for that red snapper? The yeah. other one? I'm going to check it out. Okay. I'm coming right back. So, back in the water, we move spots and 
I've been getting some comments about gutting the fish in the water. I started doing it in the past couple videos. And honestly, if it's like this, you should have no issue doing it. I've never seen an issue with gutting fish in the water, but if there is a shark just gone psycho, then of course, maybe you shouldn't, but for the most part, it shouldn't be an issue, in my experience. But here we go, we are back at a different spot now. This is Ted's dive, and he shot another stud mangrove snapper. This was a really awesome spot. It was just loaded with fish, as you can see. You couldn't even shoot all of these mangroves if you tried. And there's so many. And here is a red snapper. It's got a big chunk out of it. But Ted was wanting to shoot one. He hadn't shot one at this point. So I hold off. And just across the rig, you can kind of make it out. There's a cobia swimming around towards this side. I look up, look for Ted so I can point it out to him. It's cruising around the corner of that pipe. You see it? Cobia right here. Did you see him? Whenever I was swimming up, he came up, he was under you, and then uh, he'd swim back around. But I saw that fish, that is a red snapper. It just has a cut out of him. But that is a red. So after confirming that that was a red snapper, Ted goes down. He ends up passing that cobia since it wasn't super big, and he sticks this red snapper. but it looks like it took off and I give it a line of tug and it is stuck in the murk. But fortunately it comes out. But I can't tell how good that shot is. I thought the flopper was on this side of me. So I went down and put another shot in it. That's that red snapper. I didn't know if your bar was in it. That's why I shot him again. Good job. I, I was going down to the cobia. I saw the cobia going down. Yeah, it was right behind you. Uh -huh. And I saw you looking in the rig. Good stuff. So we ended up hitting one more rig before we called it. And I didn't get my GoPro on in time, but Ted shoots another red snapper, gets his limit. And this really just turned out to be an awesome day. To get out on the Gulf of Mexico with conditions like this is really special. And that is how you do it. End of the day with a perfect spine shot. No commotion, no problems. Fish in the boat. <laughs> Someone hooked him, but looks like that is It's a recent one. Yeah.
this was funny. That snapper actually had a fully intact leader dangling from its mouth. No chafes, no rust on the hook. And I actually ended up using that leader later this summer. All right, that's about all she wrote for the diving in this video. Ted ended up getting his limit of red snapper. I shot that one. They shot some mangroves and we ended up with a decent mess of fish there. Wasn't really trying to get a bunch. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Seriously, thank you guys so much for the support lately. The growth has been crazy. And I just wanna say what we are doing, the videos we are making now, would not be possible without you guys watching and supporting the channel. And the ad integrations that I'm doing the video especially would not be possible without you guys watching. So seriously, big thank you. Those are really helping me out to support myself doing what I'm doing, making these videos. And I know it's not what you come for, but ultimately it will help us make more videos, make them better, and do more. So big thank you. Really appreciate it. Stay tuned for the next video. I'll give you guys a quick hint for what to expect in that one. I end up shooting a fish I've never shot before, a really cool fish, and then we see another giant Kubera. So there you go. That'll give you something to look forward to. I'll see y'all in the next one.